Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Hugo. When I came home, I found my mom crying. Dad was carrying his suitcase, and it looked like he was leaving. Mom said to Dad, Please let us support you. We want to be with you until the end. What's going on? I asked. Hugo, your dad was diagnosed with cancer. The doctor gave him three months at best. He's leaving home to live his final days as he wishes, Mom replied. I was shocked. Dad, isn't your condition curable? Please, stay with us. Son, it's stage four cancer, he said. Please don't pressure me. I have a right to live the rest of my days as I wish. Then he left home. My mom did her best to console me. Honey, your dad's right. I wish we could be together as a family to support him. But letting him go is the right thing to do. We hugged each other and cried through the night. With my dad gone, we began having financial difficulties. My mom started cleaning people's houses. She wasn't making much, but thankfully we owned our house and didn't have to worry about rent. That's the only reason we were able to get by. My mom and I kept our phones close for the next three months, expecting a call from the hospital. We agonized over the possibility of getting messages like, we lost your father, or a text from dad saying, I've been hospitalized. Another month went by. We still hadn't heard any bad news about my dad. We were relieved knowing he was still alive. But one morning, something happened. Something we never expected. The doorbell rang. I heard mom say, are you sure? But that's not possible. I ran to the door. A man stood in the doorway, arms crossed, impatiently watching my mom read through a stack of papers. As you can see, everything is bought and paid for. Your husband signed off on it. I'm the new owner of this place. You have 10 days to vacate the premises. If you aren't out by then, I'll be forced to get the authorities involved. And I don't want to have to call the police. How could that be? We'd been worried sick about my dad and he'd sold off the family house behind our backs? Mom, can't you do anything? I asked. No, sweetie, she replied in shock. The house is in your dad's name. 10 days later, they kicked us to the curb. We immediately looked to the local homeless shelters for help. We went to the biggest shelter in the city, but they had no beds available. We're desperate, Mom told the manager. I'm begging you, please help us. The shelter can only hold so many people. Ask again next month, she said dismissively. A man who had been listening to our conversation walked up to us. Hi, the name's Richard. I run the soup kitchen inside the shelter. We could always use more volunteers. If you want to work with us, you can stay in the soup kitchen dorm. <laughs> we gladly accepted. My mom was on cooking duty, and I got to work peeling potatoes and onions all day. It was exhausting work, but at least we had food and a place to stay. The dorm was right behind the kitchen. Bunk beds for the other volunteers were set up on each wall. A sickly man was confined to a single bed in the corner. He never spoke, but I could occasionally hear him cry some nights. Richard would check on him, but the man seemed to get angry whenever he saw Richard. One day, Richard took me aside. Hugo, you're a hard worker. You do a lot of work for us at the soup kitchen, but you've got to get back in school. I'm relieving you from your daily duty. I couldn't believe it. I missed seeing my friends, but the school was on the other side of town. Plus, I needed money for the subway. I thanked Richard for covering for me and went to the station to panhandle for fare. I woke up early the following day to make sure I could scrape together the sub money in time. When I got enough, I bought myself a ticket and went to school. I kept begging at the station every weekday. One morning, a lady said to me, Hugo, hi, I'm your father's old assistant, Mrs. Clements. Do you remember me? Of course, I remembered Mrs. Clements. She had been working for my dad up until a few years ago, but then she left her job and a new assistant replaced her. When Mrs. Clements asked me how my mom was doing, I told her our story. She was so shocked when I told her my dad had cancer. I'm so sorry, Hugo. It's rather difficult for me to tell you this, but you have a right to hear the truth. I don't think your father has cancer. Your father was having an affair. He hired his girlfriend after firing me. I heard from my friends at the company that they both left work a few months ago. I followed her on Instagram. She's traveling and shopping all the time, probably with your father. It looks like they are spending the money from the sale of your house on a luxurious trip. By the look of things, she's probably a scammer. I can't grasp how your father fell for someone like her. 
I returned to the soup kitchen and told my mom everything I had just learned. She was devastated, as I imagined she would be. She collapsed on the floor, sobbing for hours. That day, we realized my dad had ruined our lives with selfishness. Richard saw us crying in the soup kitchen and asked us what was wrong. I told him everything. He stood there, both stunned and saddened by what he'd heard. Our stories have something in common, he began. My wife passed away three years ago. My son left home because he blamed me for his mother's death. He was right. Because I had given in to my ambition to make money, I neglected them for a long time. One day, I collapsed at the office. That's how I got diagnosed and discovered I only had a year to live. What a weird coincidence, huh? Your dad lied to you, but this was my truth. When I discovered that I didn't have much time left on Earth, I wanted to find my son and make it up to him. But soon, I learned he was homeless, sick, and staying here in this same shelter. You know him. He's staying with us in the dorm, though he's still mad at me. I begged him to leave with me, but he won't do it. So I took over the soup kitchen to be close to him. Richard's story moved us very much. We were surprised that the disabled patient in the dorm was his son. Richard asked me to bring him a piece of paper and a pen, and I did. He took the paper and asked me, Hugo, do you know what domain means? Yeah, we learned about it at school. A website's address is called a domain, like youtube.com or amazon.com, I replied. Richard scribbled a few notes on the paper and handed them to me. Go to any internet cafe tomorrow. Visit the site I wrote down there. It's a domain sales marketplace. Log in with the username and password I gave you. There's a precious domain in my account. Put that on sale. What is it? I asked curiously. Richard smiled. Pizza.com. It's one of the world's most valuable domains. Pizza brands are ready to spend millions of dollars on it. When you auction it off, Whoever bids the highest owns pizza.com. I haven't got much life left in me. I donated all my money to the shelter. This domain is the only thing that I have left. You and your mom can start a new life with the money from its sale. In return, I only ask one thing. Please take my son with you. Make room for him in your house. Accept him into your family and give him the peace he's yearned for his whole life. Will you do this for me? Of course we will. But don't you also want to live with us? My mom asked. If I come with you, my son wouldn't leave, replied Richard. I love serving these people here anyway. I want to spend my final days helping them. I put pizza.com on sale, just like Richard asked. Pizza brands fought tooth and nail at the auction to outbid each other. The winning bidder bought pizza.com for $5 million. Thanks to Richard, I'm a millionaire now. We bought a big house. Richard's son accepted our offer and came to live with us. We gave him the best room in the house. He was incredibly moved when he found out what his father had done. He called him and offered forgiveness. Richard, of course, couldn't have been happier, but he still didn't move in with us. He preferred working at the soup kitchen. One day, one of the maids came to my room and said, your mother is waiting for you at the door. You have a guest. I wondered who it could be. At first, I was shocked to see my dad at the door, but I quickly pieced together why. Your dad says he's very sorry and wants us to forgive him, Mom said with a curt laugh. What do you think? Of course, she was being sarcastic. Shall we forgive him? Son, your mother doesn't believe me, but I miss you. I regret what I've done. I made a huge mistake. That horrible woman was a thief. One morning, I woke up and she was gone. She took all the money and ran, he said. My mom's satisfied smile faded into a cold stare. So you were broke and decided to show up here? My dad couldn't respond. He just stared at the floor in shame. How did you find us? I asked. You're still using the same phone. It used to be mine, after all. It's saved in the Find My Phone app. When the app led me here, I was sure it was the wrong address. I thought you might be working here or something. Dad trailed <gasps> off momentarily, realizing the disrespect in his tone. I can't express how proud I was to find you own this mansion, he stammered in desperation. I'm sure you have a place for me in this huge house. Please, I want to come home and make things right. Please forgive me. I took a good look at my dad. He looked miserable. It made no sense to talk to him any longer. I held my mom's arm gently and pulled her aside. <gasps> then without saying a word, I slammed the door in his face. <gasps> He began screaming wildly and pounding the door. Security personnel stepped in and kicked him off the property. We could hear him crying outside. I'm sorry. 
I'm so sorry! But he'd already burned that bridge. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was watching the whole thing live on the security cameras. I must admit, seeing my dad on that day for the last time couldn't have been more satisfying. <laughs>